Everything looks good on my end. Wonderful. Well, yeah. settings. Uh, James, you like Jamie now? Oh, you can just plug in whenever you want. You're good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start in three. Two, one. Hey everyone, and welcome to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian. We are sponsored by Be Remembered, where you can have a wonderful wedding experience right here for photo, video, event planning, DJ, makeup, photo booth, coordination. I think I said them all, but go ahead and visit www.beremembered.weddings.com to check it out today. But on this show, I have a wonderful guest with me. I have Allison Hassard. Our award-winning floral design team brings together a combination of 75 years of floral design experience. And this year you're being inducted, or I should say last year, you were inducted into the The Knot and Wedding Wires Hall of Fame for 2022. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Before we came on here, we were talking about how this is all you know and love. This is it. I'm and a florist. <laughs> you're a florist. To the end. <laughs> and that's absolutely incredible. So 17 years old, is that when you started? Before yes, then? 16. 16. Yes, yes, I've been there. Wow. 28, 38 years. Oh my God. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, my question, just even when you told me that, is how did you start in floral design? Was it weddings or was it just overall like, family? How does this all begin? So I started um, just as a part time job in high school, okay. after school, um, you know, after school and weekends, and just worked in the shop. I mm. was. Fortunate enough then to have a uh, manager who was also a teacher in floral design, huh. and I did not understand it then, mm -hmm. the education that I was getting, but um, I got a great ed education on design, mm -hmm. just worked there for several years, and um, just moved my way up to mm -hmm. all of their, uh, it was a, a store that had multiple locations, mm -hmm. and I managed and went around to the different locations and learned how to, you know, uh, multitask and make sure that everybody, all the stores were cohesive and yep. consistent. Yep. And that's kind of where I, I learned my, you know, kind of everything goes into one place. Right. Um, and then after I had finished there, I, uh, well, I got married and started to have a family, but I decided to go back to work and started at my current location and have well, been there ever since. I think it's so funny because florals and I want to say this properly because I, I I mean it in such a sincere way. They're so important to a wedding, but they're so discredited from a vendor standpoint because they, are. they you just don't even understand. Like I'm a photographer. I've done photo. I've done video. I've you know been the assistant coordinator. All these silly things, right? And you just expect them to be there and to be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But there's so much. There's a lot of back work and leg work that goes into yeah. bringing flowers to a wedding. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And now they have the wooden ones. They have all of these different, you Lots know. Lots of different um, accents and elements, yes. Mm. And, and matching them too. And, and the biggest thing for me is it brings out such, it brings out the personality of exactly. the couple, right? Exactly. Yes. And, and that's so important, but yet it's not even recognized. You see it in the photo, you see it with the couple, you take the photo and you go, wow, that's beautiful. But you don't, your brain puts it together, right. but you don't even consciously understand right. it, right? It's, it sets the mood, it sets the mm. tone, it sets, it's the personality of the couple. It brings all that out and they can really, they can personalize their whole event with, you know, the colors and the mm. flowers and there's just so many different ways that you can go. And that's so much of your job, right? Mm -hmm. To understand what their personality is. It, yes. All right. So I have I have a question for you. Now, now, now you got me excited because that's my job too for photo, right? It's yes. to say, okay, you act, you know, goofy. I need to get goofy shots of you too. I want to, I want to pull out your personality. Right. But what we find all the time for video, especially, they don't even know what they want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. And so how do you balance that? Have, because you're going into no the idea. Wedding. Right. <laughs> a lot of brides or a lot of couples come to us and have no, no clear idea of where their flowers are going, what colors they're doing. Um, mm. And I actually just read in um, the knot some articles about color palettes and mm. uh, which way do you want to go? Do you want your tone to be and the mood to be warm and inviting or do you want it to be mm. bold and, and, exciting or, yeah. you know, how are you going to mix all those colors and what are you going to do with the colors to make that happen? Right. So it's, it's very, 
colors and flowers are very interesting. It's a great art form. And, all right. And so now, now I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just nosy <laughs> at some point yeah. too. Um, the venue, does that play a big role in it? Definitely. Okay. And, and we'll go more into all of this, mm. but I, I, I'm assuming that's huge. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and the time of year. Okay. I mean, there's so many elements. Yes. Seasonality and, is huge for flowers mm. um, because not all flowers are available year round. Right. But I do have to imagine, and this is just, so I have a background in psychology and marketing. So you have to understand that where mm -hmm. I'm coming from. I have to imagine people want things that they possibly can't get these they, days. They do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's really hard to um, steer them in a different direction. But right. there's, if you're going with the colors and the, the kind of overall feeling that you want, mm. there's so many flowers that are available in those shades and colors. And it's going to mm. convey the same thing. It doesn't have to be a sunflower or right. a peony mm. just because, you know. Now, now we should go into this and I should tell our entire audience that I have no clue in this field. I've been talking to a lot of people and I can keep up, right? I'm like, hey, no, I've done the coordination thing enough. I know what you're talking about planning. We don't do flowers or be remembered. I don't have a clue. So you're going to have to, <laughs> you're gonna have to <laughs> walk me through a little bit here. Okay. Um, although it might help because I'm going to play dumb. Okay. Because I, because I am in this regard, <laughs> <laughs> it's not playing actually. And I'm going to try to just ask what a typical couple would ask. Now I feel like how involved are men in this situation? Um, they're becoming more involved, really? but not really very, very rarely. Mm. Really. It's, it's mostly, um, actually the moms are becoming more involved. Uh, yep. They had kind of not been involved for a while, but they're coming mm. back into play again. Um, but now it's more the couples are mm. planning together. And I yeah. think it's... Um, That's across the industry. Yeah. I think it's because both parties don't really know what they're looking for. Like mm. it used to be that, you know, brides dreamed of their special day forever yeah. since they were a little girl and mm -hmm. how it's going to be. And I don't... I yeah. mean, we're in a whole different time. So I don't think that that's really the focus anymore. Like right. they're not thinking... So now it's... Uh, it's a partnership and yep. they want to do things together. And yep. both of them don't, don't <laughs> generally know which direction they want to go. They might have like certain opinions about certain parts of it, but mm. as far as the flower goes, it's not, it's still predominantly female. So, so I have to ask you to, well, actually I have, I have a question before that. Um, I have a good one for you, but the, is it mother of the bride, mother of the groom or a combination? Uh, mostly mother of the bride, but I'm yes. getting mother of the groom too. Mm -hmm. Yep. I get that yep. quite a bit. Yep. yep. I, I, I get the mother of groom from halfway yes. across the country yes. being like, Hey, uh, I, I want this. Be, yeah. <laughs> yep. like, because yeah. I think that that generation, the moms mm -hmm. right now yeah. have more of an opinion and more of an education about what a wedding is all about. Mm -hmm. And I think that the younger generation getting married yes. don't know all the details mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it kind of got lost, but it, it, it got lost. It's funny because I was on a podcast uh, or I was actually on a radio show with WCRN one day and I was talking about that disconnect and yeah. trying to understand where it really happened yeah. because it used to be such a celebration of two families coming together and now there's a lot of narcissistic tendencies of like it's about us and us alone and right. it's like well and, and you know and there was the argument of the fact that the couples are actually paying for it more right. now and so it is more about them because it's right. their financial assets exactly. right and, and so there, there's a a bit there but the the funnier question is do you love or hate pinterest uh both <laughs> we have okay, a love so, hate relationship with same, pinterest yep. yes it can be helpful mm -hmm. but it also can confuse mm -hmm. couples a lot yep. um for me most couples will pick kind of similar looking things on their mm -hmm. boards but there's sometimes things that are thrown in there. It's like, I'm not really sure where that is going. Right. And I but, don't um, know what that yes, is. I don't know what that is. But Pinterest also is focusing and, and showing grandiose yes. ideas yes. And, and flower installations and all of these beautiful, gorgeous things, which I love. Uh -huh. But people have no clue one, how many flowers that takes and how expensive it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's an installation. That's a production that takes mm -hmm. multiple people yep. um, yeah. and lots of preparation to and do like, all that. Like we always say for photo and video, can it be done? Of course it can. Absolutely. What's your budget? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's a big one too. And my favorite thing is that was fake. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, that's not a real wedding. Right. Like, huh? I'm like, that's an advertisement. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's not real. Which that's is most of what 
Pinterest is. It's right. it's really advertising. You know, you want to show your best work if you're doing a photo shoot or mm -hmm. something like that. So you're you're showing the best. Right. So the million dollar yep. wedding that you get exactly. once a year. Exactly. That's everywhere. Exactly. Um, so just a few things though. What's the common questions? All right. You know what? I, I actually want to rephrase this a little bit. What's the best thing a couple can come to you and say besides, I don't know? Um, what's the best thing that they can say? Best question to ask when they're, when they're starting their journey to, to purchase florals and to get set up for their wedding. What, you know, what, what would I even say to you? Is it just, you know, we have a wedding in autumn and, you know, we want to try to match that tone. Is that how you start? Yes. I think you should kind of go with the season. Although mm. even that doesn't matter as much anymore. Mm. Um, you can have colors any time of the year. Yeah. Um, Go with your venue. Mm. Try to see what fits in there. For the most part, florals are, florals are kind of on the end part of um, planning. Yeah, like you're not going to pick your flowers first, right? And then pick your dress colors. Yeah, like you have to have some sort of an idea. And if people just don't really know, mm. I, I saw a um, a good suggestion is yeah. kind of take an actual color wheel. Yeah. And look onto it and what, what's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. Your favorite color is, say, purple. Yeah. And kind of see what flowers, flowers go, or what color palette kind of goes with that. Do you huh. want to go, you know, to the left of purple, to the right of the purple, or yeah. completely opposite, um, you know, primary color? So kind of that will set your tone and your feel and, yeah. and coordinate with the feeling that you want. And then kind of go from there. I thought you were going to say so, just spin the wheel and yeah, well, see what that, happens. That could work too. You could try starting with your favorite color, but that, if that doesn't work, just spin it. Yeah, right. Just go for it. Yeah. But you know, that's a great point. And it, it's, of course, my my man brain that didn't even think of the, of the dress concept. Yeah. I was like, oh, seasons. No, dress is probably very important. Dress is a pr important. Um, I mean, we've had a couple people actually pick out their flowers first and then go from mm. there because they wanted the best blooms of the season. Oh. But that's... A little bit. Backwards. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that attracts me, which I love the harvest style yeah. bouquets. Yep. I think they're beautiful, mm -hmm. especially when you have the grand farm or barn weddings. They right. just look wonderful. Right. Um, but yeah, those are, those are some of my favorite. But we're actually going to wrap it up right here. For mm -hmm. now, we're going to jump to a commercial and we're going to come right back. We're going to start talking a little bit about how to pick your florist, you know, location, all mm -hmm. these different things that might make up the, uh, the importance of finding one. Awesome. So we'll be right back with Allison here. Thank you everyone for joining us on uh, wonderful world of weddings sponsored by Be remembered. And we'll see you in just a second. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian. You are joining us here, and we are speaking to Allison Hazard. Before I get back into the conversation with her, I want to let you know that this show is actually brought to you by the New England Wedding Expo as well. It is on April 16th in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Go to NewEnglandWeddingExpo.com to join us. The whole Be Remember team will be there, along with many other vendors, to find the perfect vendor for your wedding. But we want to get right back to the conversation here because we were having a great one before the break. And we were talking about all the uh, fun missteps and good times. So planning a wedding yes. for every couple, no matter the step. It's the first time, hopefully the last. Yes. Uh, and it's confusing. It's very confusing. There's a <laughs> lot, of, uh, lot of things involved. A lot of variables mm -hmm. that can make your day or break your day. And I think one of the biggest things is the small, minute details mm -hmm. in flowers tend to be that detail. Yes. They tend to be in those detail shots for photo and they become so important because it's a staple right. for mostly the bride. Let's be honest, the yes. bride. Yep. Although those, <laughs> oh my God, I'm blanking on the word right now. The groom. Every time I go, I go in. <laughs> Number one, they don't have pants on, which kills me. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 it's a big problem. Every single time they don't have pants on. I don't know why I go in. I'm like, guys, put your pants on. Let's go. But on top of that, they never have the boutonnieres on. Never. And I have to line them up in a row and say, just, just give me the damn pin. Mm -hmm. And I put the pin in there and I put them all on. I said, now pretend like you're doing it so I can go ahead and get a good shot. Correct. 
drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, before it ever gets to the men, they have to decide, well, the bride has to decide what this beautiful bouquet is going to be. Yes. Where do we go? Are we going local? Are we, you know, how local? Uh, that was the first thing that came to mind. Is locality very important for your florist? Uh, locality as in venue or, or yeah, where are we getting our flowers? Actually to the venue. To the venue. Um, I mean, we go all over. So you go all over. Yeah, okay. It, we've been everywhere. So it, it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. No. Okay. So that was my biggest question. So you don't, it, it, as long as you find a florist that you enjoy and that you love what they do, doesn't really matter I mean, where they We go everywhere. I you don't go everywhere. Right, right, goes everywhere, right, but right, right. <laughs> we go everywhere. Okay. All right. So, cause that was a big thing. I didn't know how, and, and again, <clears throat> due to my lack of knowledge, I'm simply just asking, how long does it take you to set up these things? Is it a big process to get everything in that door and set up? Yes. Yeah. Um, some, some more than others. Mm. Um, but a lot of venues don't really give us a lot of time. Right. Many times we have two hours oh my to God. set everything up, which is, um, and we can do it. Yeah, We've yeah, done yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it seems like it can be unrealistic, but we mm. make a lot of things, um, in advance yeah, you that do. we can kind of huh. put the things together uh, when we get there. Like the mechanics are all set and we just kind of put it all together and put right. and add the flowers to a it. A lot of preparation yeah. prior. There yeah. are some that are larger scale, mm -hmm. like much larger that you would definitely need more time for. Yeah. Yeah. But we've done some pretty large things in a pretty short amount of time. I'm assuming it's just a matter of people, right? Number of people. And yep. it goes right back to that budget. Yes, it's just exactly. like how many people, exactly. what do you want? Like exactly. if we have to set up a grandioso setup, right. like we need, I don't know how many people, but quite I mean, a bit. Yeah. If we need to do this, it takes two people. If we need to do this, it takes four people. If right. we have to set up like, you know, 10 or 12 different areas of this mm -hmm. very blank venue, then we need probably, you know, yeah. 12 or whatever people. And you know, it's funny because I was talking to Olio, the vent, the, oh, the owner from Olio. Place, yeah. Love it. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's a blank canvas. It's a blank canvas. And so you are going into that and, and setting it up from scratch. Yes. And so that has to take you a little bit longer than a typical venue that does most of the legwork for yes. you. Yep. Huh. All right. So we gone ahead. We found our, our florist. We love you. <laughs> We're ready to go. Now the question is, you're going to start asking about our vision. Right. And we're going to go back to the Pinterest board and we're going to say, back to Pinterest. Hey, we love these colors. And you're like, did you have a dress picked out yet? And they're probably like, no. And they're like, all right, talk to me when you have a dress. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> talk to me when you have yes. a dress. <laughs> Maybe let's get a tie to match that dress for the groom. Right. How many people you have. These are all things that are going in, right? Yes. We need to know all of that information. It, it can change, of course. But mm -hmm. if you have a general idea, if you are having a smaller wedding party or no, you know, a, a micro ceremony mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, I want all of my friends from college to be in it and right. have a bridal party of like 12 or 14. Yeah. All, Gotta love those ones, yeah. huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Those are certainly, again, it's it's the guys. They kill me because I go into the bridal suite, right? And all the women, are they're, they're just so prepared. They're like, hey, I have this flat lay ready for you. You want to take a picture? I'm like, Yes, thank you for doing my job. And I take some photos and I say, hey, ladies, how are we doing? I'm like, oh, we have our bouquets ready. We have this already. It's like, wonderful. I go to the guys. I'm like, where are your pants? <laughs> They're not on. I don't know what's happening here. And where are your uh, boutonnieres? And it's like, what are those? I'm like, what are the? Yes. Did you, are you? They're, what? Yeah. Yeah. They don't have a lot of knowledge about those things. <laughs> their priorities and their thought process is very different about the it's like wedding. wake up, shower, go to the gym, and then maybe get and, this whole thing wedding right. done. And yeah. the only thing that they should really focus on is be there on time. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I do. I think the boutonnieres are like, uh, not secondary, but it's just like, hey, you know. You better get there on time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. If she's late, fine. Fair enough. Right. If he's late. Mm, Although not, nobody should be late. Nobody That's should be late, but not a good start. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you that I had a, I had a groom wait two hours though once. That yeah, was, that's unnecessary. That's rough. That's rough. Poor guy. Yeah. But the greatest thing is I walk up to him and I'm like, hey, are you nervous? Like, you okay? How you doing? He's like, yeah, I signed up for this. I'm like, what do you mean? Right? He's like, she's never been on time in her entire life. I'm like, okay, as long as you know. As long as you know going into it. Everyone's sweating bullets. He's like, I'm fine. This is normal. I'm like, okay. Um, all right. So, so we gone ahead. We, we've got everything together. Um, are there any tips or research that the couple should, or I should say, are there any tips for the research that the couple should be doing? 
you know? I mean, again, love, hate, but Pinterest mm-hmm. is a good one to at least get your, um, like the mood going and the colors. Right. It'll show you a lot of different color combinations for mm-hmm. the same, say, color dress if you had that lavender or purple dress. It right. will show you a lot of different color palettes you can do with that. Mm. Um, but then check on Instagram. I, yeah. You can probably just... You know, are, search for flowers or, or mm-hmm. the season. Right. Um, are you guys big? So where do a lot of couples find you? Is it the knot? Is it wedding wire? Is it Instagram? The knot and wedding wire. Not is wedding our wire. Biggest, Those yeah. Are, yeah. 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 I can imagine. I mean, what I always find too is Instagram is a great place to, what's it? The death scroll, I think is what they call it, where they just fly up. Yeah. 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 So they find photos. Right. Oh, trust me. I'm as technologically <laughs> illiterate as anyone of us. So I'm, I'm yeah, making oh up God. terms right now. They're probably looking at us off camera like, what are you doing? It's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, don't worry, we're in the same boat. Okay. <laughs> but but I find that, you know, a lot of brides, they're they're scrolling and yes. they're saying like, oh, that's pretty. But then they go on the not wedding wire or Thumbtack or Google or whatever have you. And they're like, oh, that's the company, right? Yes. Like that's the portfolio. Yes. Okay, so that's where they're doing a lot of that research. Mm-hmm. They're seeing the reviews, et cetera. Right. Okay, okay. And again, it, it it then becomes, okay, we found someone that we really like their portfolio. Now we're going to go into the design phase. We're going to start asking mm-hmm. questions. Do you do a um, consultation with them? How does that process work? We do. So mm. for us, we have um, the couple will fill out a intake form. Yep. Um, through our, web, our website. Um, and with that, they get a starter proposal sent out to them based on what they have filled out. You know, the more right. information in that, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, if we know the venue or we've researched the venue, mm-hmm. we can give them additional suggestions as to where they can put flower oh. in that kind of starter proposal because a lot of them don't realize where they need to put flowers. Right, right, right. Or how they got there, like you said. It's yeah. like, how did those flowers get there? Um, Are those a part of the venue? Yeah. Or did those come in? <laughs> and we have that. It's like, well, we saw flowers there when we went for a tour. It's like, yeah, they're probably not there all the time. <laughs> right, right, right. And then um, if the starter proposal fits within their budget and they're, right. it's kind of looking good for them and it's a good fit, then they will set up a consultation with me mm-hmm. that will be um, either by phone, Zoom, or in sure. person, we have yeah. a studio that they can come in person now that mm. we can do that again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> and then um, once they are, and we go into more in-depth detail about what they're looking for. And again, yeah. making more suggestions based on their, their venue and their overall look and feel. And um, then if all is good, they just sign the proposal and we go from there. You know, it's funny because last week uh, when I was talking to Olio, um, they were talking about this idea that they, they're very transparent with their prices. Mm-hmm. And we've liked to do the same. But one of the problems in this industry is there's so many variations. Mm-hmm. And I feel like florals, oh my God. It's it, huge. It, it's incredible, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And so that intake form must be your bread and butter to try to understand what they're even looking for from a general standpoint, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And at that point, what do they need to know? Probably just how many people they have in their party. The number in their their party, the bridal party and the groom's party. Mm-hmm. Um, so the number of personals, if they're thinking of some sort of ceremony backdrop or mm. florals, yeah. if it's a venue or a church mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. reception flowers. So it, yep. it's pretty basic for that. Yep. And then there's all the other little innuendo parts that they don't think about. And I'm assuming you need to know tables, the amount of tables, that type of thing. Just kind of an idea. I okay. mean, if, if they're planning their wedding they and they're, Asking for us, they've probably already decided if they're going to have 100 people right. or 200 people or if it's 500 people or something like that. Yeah. Because there's a big difference between, you know, 50 yeah. people coming to your wedding and 500. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you said a word to their personals that I'm assuming that's, you know, bouquets mm-hmm. and boutonnieres. Boutonnieres and yeah. corsages, yes. Okay, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's an interesting word because, again, I'm playing dumb. And I, I can nope. pick it up, but <laughs> I just, I, I you know, I've never heard it said in that way. Yep. So that's how it's described. Yep. The personal okay. flowers. It's the flowers that are going to hold or wear yeah. or, or such. Perfect. So we're going to wrap it up right mm-hmm. there. We're going to jump to a quick commercial break. And we'll be back in just a few seconds. And we're really going to go into just like kind of working with you. Mm-hmm. And after that intake form comes through when we've signed that proposal. Okay. Um, so guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with Allison and we're going to talk a little bit more about florals and everything you need to know for your wedding on the show, Wonderful World of Weddings in just a few seconds. And just to let you know, this show is sponsored by the New England Wedding Expo. So make sure to get your tickets today at newenglandweddingexpo.com. See you in just a bit. Every step. 
Writing stories that seek to be read Taking hold of the moment as we discover Every color filled with wonder Now we finally see We got everything we need Here we go Hi everyone and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian. We're going to start this off with our sponsorship here to make my life easy. And so this is the New England Wedding Expo uh, sponsorship here. We are sponsored by them. It's going to be on April 16th at the Best Western in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Go to NewEnglandWeddingExpo.com to get your tickets today. I know tickets for individuals just went on sale. Uh, they are free at the moment. First 150 are free. So jump on there and get your tickets today. But we are back. I am with Allison Hazard. Okay, I said it right this time. We're, we're working in the break. It's the whole thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, but anyways, so the company's name is Just Bloomed Weddings. Florals is what we're talking about today because that is a huge part of the day that is really not noticed by most couples in the regards of you don't really understand it until you're in it. Right. And this is, right. this is the entire wedding industry as a whole. You have no clue what you're doing. You have, you, you go to a wedding, you enjoy the cocktails, you see your friends getting married and you don't even think twice. Maybe you say, Oh, those are beautiful flowers, but you don't understand that they match the dress. They do it all. <laughs> they pull the whole day together and you're just sitting there like, Oh yeah, that's pretty. It's like, no, there's a whole thing we got to get going on here. So we were talking about the whole intake process. We were going through it all. We've gone ahead. We've gotten our proposal. Before we sign it, are we paying anything as a down payment? How does that work? Photo and video, it's usually 50% in the industry. What does it look like for a couple signing on for flowers? So for us, we require a 20% deposit Okay. Um, and the signed proposal. Mm -hmm. And then we do uh, two payments, like 50% and then 50% when we've confirmed all the details. Oh, okay. Really? And is that because variables change so often? Yeah. There's some things that will change. You mm -hmm. don't usually know the number of tables, the exact, exact number of tables right, um, right. at the beginning, yeah. you know, it could be 14 to 16. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the boutonnieres and corsages could change a little uh, bit. Uh -huh. um, and then maybe if we've sent out the proposal and we've, you know, put out a cost for, for something and they've decided that maybe they have a little bit more much money in their budget from something else they can yeah. use, or if they have to scale back just a little bit, they can, they can make those changes and we adjust yeah. it accordingly. And you know, I find that over the past few years with COVID, especially from COVID, you've seen so much insecurity in terms of financials that people tend to either start you know, with a, with a tighter budget, they say, Hey, let's just go out there and let's dedicate X amount for a, our wedding. And of course, it's dependent upon the amount of people you're inviting and all of these different factors and variables. But they tend to really kind of cost cut in the beginning and then say, oh, we have a few extra bucks. Let's do this, right? Do you see that same type of trend occurring with you or not so much? Um, not so much, but mm. I did read something that people will spend more on mm. florals um, oh, coming really? up. So um, people should generally put aside like 10 to 15% of their wedding budget for florals. Uh -huh. But if, if florals are important, yeah. then you should really consider more because flowers are, are expensive. They're, yeah. And I don't think a lot of people realize how expensive they are. Right. The amount of yeah. time and preparation that goes into it is the outstanding. Time, the preparation and COVID has had a very big impact on the floral industry as well. Really? For um, supplies, okay. like vases and containers and linens yep. and to the flowers when, when COVID hit all of the farms, mm. they didn't have anybody to harvest all the flowers. Right. So they, right. All, they died. all died. Yeah. Yeah. And then it huh. takes a while for them to come back and right. the farms don't have the, the amount of staff they need to replant right. those farms. Yeah. Which is the story of the entire industry. Exactly. Right. And it, yep. it, it's from start to finish. Yep. You're going to have problems. There's always there. something. There's yep. the weather mm -hmm. has been not very cooperative. You know, that's a great point that I didn't even think about. Yeah. How in the heck do you work with New England? Um, well, New England, <laughs> obviously, our season is very short, so we don't right. rely on just New England flowers at you all. Can't. We get ours from all over the all over the world. Um, 
because oh. there's season, you know, there's different seasons in different right. areas of the of the world. But there's also other things that we're not thinking about. Yeah. Again, like you know, fires that mm-hmm. destroy entire farms, or right. war in Ukraine, and yeah, they had a big farm of lilacs, and they they're gone. They're gone. So you know, that's too funny because we we don't consider this at all, right? You just, and especially in our instant society, it's like I want lilacs, yes. and it's like, well, you can't you have can't lilacs an today. Entire farm, right, is has, gone. Is gone. Wow. Or even like the Rose Bowl Parade, mm. like all of those flowers that we use for the Rose Bowl. Yeah. From the Rose Bowl Parade to Valentine's Day, which is coming up. Yeah. It's not really enough time to grow that rose again. Wow. Right? That's, yeah. That's one of the reasons why roses and flowers are expensive at Valentine's Day. That's so bizarre. And and I'll tell you, wait, that's why, are you kidding <laughs> me? one of the reasons. No. And supply and demand. So you're telling me the girlfriend's Every, not getting roses. Well, because if that, no, if that's the <laughs> reason, I'm, I'm thinking twice. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we don't just raise them because Valentine's Day. It's, it's right, because. Right, right. No, no, no. I'm actually more upset right? that a college football right? team said that we're going to jack up the price on Valentine's Day because we want to throw them on a field. Right, right. To a bunch of college kids who don't care about flowers. It's, All right. It's a thing. <laughs> society my goodness okay i mean how many times a year do you buy flowers <clears throat> or if you had to buy flowers well <clears throat> you would pick an occasion correct valentine's day sure we'll go with that okay yep. everybody's gonna so <laughs> many more the shop percentage is them. so much higher yes yeah when stop and shop has them <laughs> on the way out shame that's... shame no stop and shop <laughs> <laughs> Hey, anyway. I'm just saying, all right, they look nice. Yeah, yeah. So supply and demand is a big one. Yes, no, totally. <laughs> all throughout the all throughout the year, but especially wedding season huh. because so many people are getting married at right. the same time. Huh. Like last year, the, the, yeah, there the was boom. a big, whew. Oh my goodness, yeah, you must have been of, crazy. It, yeah. yeah, so everybody wants all the same flowers. And that's so funny, again, right? I mean, this is me. I My brain doesn't really stop. I always think about logistics and understanding things, but I I never even considered this. I just thought, okay, we have seasons in New England, so that must be great. But it's like at the same time, our seasons are so short, it might kill you. And Mm -hmm. so you're telling me they come from all over the place. And you're telling me that a stupid football game is screwing up flowers for my Valentine's Day. I'm not happy. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I think I might, if they're listening, I'm not, we got to (laughs) talk. (laughs) We will. (laughs) All right. So... Let's get into timeline here because for photo, for video planning, I always think timelines are very important Mm -hmm. because a lot of customers, I had one this morning who actually said to me, okay, we booked, now what? And I'm like, your wedding's in two years, so not a whole lot. Um, And that's a big thing. You know, there was this unrealistic expectation that I was going to be on the phone with her every week. Uh, To be quite honest with you, I don't need any of her information until the 14th for photography at least, right? Right. And so um, managing that expectation, I think is really important for Mm -hmm. couples. We've gone ahead, we've signed, we've paid our 20% down. Is there a lot of communication or are we waiting until a certain moment? What's happening now? I mean, we're happy to make like adjustments along the way if it's, yep. you know, whatever they need, but communicate, but not over communicate. Like you right. said, like if you've got little changes, mm-hmm. kind of save them up yeah. for us. Um, yeah. Cause we don't need to change like, you know, from two to one or one to two right. every single week. That's takes a lot of time yeah. just to do that. So if you've got little changes, kind of save them up. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do check in a month beforehand yep. um, to get all the final details, which is like the delivery time where the where people are getting dressed. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's mm-hmm. somewhere else, if they're doing the first look and where the flowers need to go. Yep. So we, you know, by a month out, you have most of your information that mm-hmm. you're going to need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and getting the information from the venue for timing and things like that as well. Yeah. And I think that's really funny because I, I tell my clients all the time, whenever they say, Oh, well, I really want to talk. It's like, okay, look, we can. But again, those small detail changes, you told me 12 one time, you told me 1230 the next, you told me 12 again. And then, you know, 14 days or seven days out, you forgot to tell me it's back to 12. I would rather just know 14 days out, hey, what did we get to here? What are we at? Yep. Um, so that way I don't show up at 1230 and you're like, whoa, you're supposed to be here at 12. I was like, right. you told me three different things. Right, right. <laughs> so again, you're right. I think it is saving that up, making sure nothing's on a whim. It's concrete. Right. It's 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 all set. For you, I understand a month is definitely more important because of the amount of preparations, right. the amount of weddings you right. must do. Um, for us, the 14 day time frame, I think is a little bit more you know, yeah. works. Yep. You know, we, we, we just get told. Well, we to have to order our, you know, reserve the flowers right. and, and get the correct amount in, yeah. um, working with, you know, perishable things. Of course. You can't 
order so much in advance, you know, right. it's all right. about kind of right down to the end. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then, so that brings us up to that, you know, month mark. How long does it take you to prep for flowers and, and get them all ready for a wedding? Is it? Well, we usually reserve about a month out the, okay. the types of flowers that we're going to use, uh-huh. but they don't come in until the week before. Yeah. And right. there's not a lot of pre- Huh. pre-planning that we can do other than getting in the vases and the containers and the hard goods. Wow. Um, and then that week it's, mm-hmm. you know, just push forward and, and get it all done. And is there any challenges, like common challenges that, you know, the couple might have in terms of flowers or is it a pretty simple road? Like, are they very hands-on in that month or are they very just kind of like, yep, yeah, they're going to show up? I mean, uh, most of them, you know, will trust us to do what we need to do. Some of them that want sounds to see. nice. Yeah. <laughs> Can you pass that we over would, for the phone video would, a little bit? We'd like them to trust us. <laughs> um, and if it comes to that day and we get to the venue and there's something not quite what we expected mm. or, um, you know, not set up the way we thought or, or whatever to trust us enough that we don't have to call you on your wedding day right. to say, Hey, what is this all about? <laughs> yeah. We can, you know, fix it. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. and we will. Yeah. And and so my last question here, just to wrap this segment up is, is, do you bring extras? Like, do you ever have to account for? Yeah, especially if it's far away. Mm. Um, I am a very prepared person. So I, I prepare for everything. Yes. So in case you never know, yeah, something could go amiss and we have to fix it. Well, you know what? That actually leads into our last topic. We're going to ask for a little like last minute tips and tricks, but I also just want to hear some funny stories because that's just me. I like to like to share stories of the industry and I feel like you have a few. You, you This many years in the industry, I feel like you have a few. So guys, we're going to be right back here. We're going to hear from Allison here at Just Bloomed Weddings. I got it all right this time. I didn't even go for the last name, <laughs> but you've been here on the wonderful World of Weddings podcast and radio show and we are sponsored by the New England Wedding Expo, where you can get your tickets today. Join us April 16th in Marlboro at the Best Western. So go to newenglandweddingexpo.com and we'll see you back here in just a bit. Thanks, guys. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. We are here with Allison Hazard. Now, before we get into that, I am going to let you know that this show is sponsored by New England Wedding Expo, where you can come join us as a vendor, or if you're a vendor listening in, you can always join us. Be remembered, we'll be there, but you can also join us as a couple and come find the vendor of your dreams since this, you know, Wonderful wedding podcast. Might as well make it sound fancy here for everyone. It's in Marlboro, April 16th. So come join us there. We're actually going to be doing a live show there. So join us and ask us any questions you might have. But let's get back to it here with Allison. Allison, you're from Just Bloomed Weddings. And we love having you because you are 20 years plus of floral expertise. I mean, I... I'm very excited because I can be dumb here and just ask you all sorts of questions, which I have if you want to go back and listen to the rest of that because I'm sure I sound foolish, but I'm okay with it. It's a good time. Um, but we're wrapping it up and I love this section of the show because I always get to hear great stories from vendors. You got you to gotta give me a little dirt. We don't have to go too crazy here, but I need a little dirt because yep. for me, I go into a wedding all the time. There's always problems. There's always something, right? Yes. I There's have always to. something that's memorable yeah. or, yeah, right? um, yes, every, every wedding is special. And like I said, has some sort of a memory to it. So I love how you're great. dancing around your words right now. It's making me so happy because I do the same thing. I do the same thing. It's like, it was very nice and, yes. and, and, and different, but no, yes. I mean, there things, are some things happen. They just, do. It's just the way of life. And I want to, I want to actually, that that's a great point though, because we should, we should let couples know Yes. when things go wrong, two things happen. It's okay. Number one, it's okay. Breathe, right? It's your special day. Just because something went wrong does not mean it's any less special. It's not as important. That being said, we also prepare for this too. I find that all the time. I find couples are just like, we don't have this. It's over. I'm like, it's really not. We can make it work. That's our job. I think that's actually what makes us Good at weddings. Yes. You know, couldn't you agree? I agree. Trust 
trusting your vendors yeah. that they know what they're doing and they're prepared for whatever might happen. I mean, we even talked how you bring a little bit extra, especially if it's far mm -hmm. and you know, what, what does go wrong? Um, actually bringing extra reminds me of, um, a situation with a cake mm. where it had to come from one building to another, mm. out, like outside to a tent. Please tell me it fell. Did it fall? It sort of, um, <laughs> because it was so uh, bumpy, yeah. the road from point A to B, mm. the whole back half of the cake fell off. Uh, um, and I think part of it is because it was like a layered with strawberry. So it was like, a, yeah. I don't know a lot about cakes, but I don't think it was a very sturdy cake. Right. And they wheeled it in mm. and the whole back of the cake is gone. And they said, God. can you fix this? Do you have extra flowers? <laughs> that I... Yeah, that was like an entire centerpiece. <laughs> there was no fixing it. So I actually, since it was a venue, I asked mm. them if they had a fake cake. You right. know, and then they put on display. I said, you just need to bring out the fake cake. We'll decorate that and you can cut this cake in the back. You can't bring right. this out. Right. I think that would have been much more of a problem than bringing oh out God. a small fake cake. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so that's how we solve that problem. You know what's so funny too in the industry? It's like when it happens, you feel terrible. And like you're telling me, and in the beginning I'm laughing because it is funny in hindsight. Some of these stories like, because yes. sometimes people just don't think things through. They're just like, I want this, right? Yes. Like the flower wall. It's like, I want this. And yes. it's like, you don't even know what that is. Right. <laughs> or how it came to be or how many Right. Like millions of flowers are on there. But you saw Kim Kardashian. You're yes. like, I'm sold. Let's do it. <laughs> let's let's do this. I saw I've, it on Pinterest. I right? need it. There's a lot of outdoor wedding mm. um, abnormalities. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, wind is must be your worst nightmare. Wind, and that was, yeah, that's yeah. one of them. We had one that was just so windy. I felt like I was in the Wizard of Oz trying to keep this hoopa standing. And it was just oh, catching geez. all of the fabric and yep. kind of blowing it. So we, me and the driver who... At the, he didn't speak English. I said, mm. we need to go find something. So we went to a hardware store and found stakes. Yep. And we yep. cut little slits in the fabric so that it wasn't blowing huh. the whole thing down. And yep. got some bricks and rocks and did a lot of praying. <laughs> <laughs> do you love zip ties? I, I do love zip they, ties. They are my favorite thing they, in the yep, world. They are, they are a solve all for a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you just have like thousands in your yes. truck? I even like got a new everything. gadget with a zip tie holder. I'll have to show it to you oh, after. Really? It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> Don't mind us over here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just ignore us completely. But yes, um, they, they're they're magnificent. I yes. mean, for wires, you can for make everything. Longer, yeah. you know, yeah. as long as you need. I had some in my car and a florist came up to me one time and they were running around. The wind was wild. Yeah. And they were just like, do you have anything to tie down? I was like, I have zip ties. They're like, why do you have zip ties? I'm like, why don't you have zip ties? Why don't you, right? <laughs> they're like, well, we're out and I have to run back and do all this. I'm like, I'll zip tie it. Give it to me. And so we were just zip tying flowers up yep. there to the... Um, arbor. Arbor. Thank you. Uh, to the arbor. No, I haven't done thousands of weddings and forget <laughs> simple words. It's fine. It's don't okay. mind. Don't mind me. It's just a term. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, I mean, all right. So wind's a big factor. Mm -hmm. You must love when it's inside then. Because inside usually is a little bit better. We don't have mm -hmm. that factor. Um, yeah. You know entire table settings blowing off the table I've seen right, right. and literally being picked up off the floor and all of the yep. silverware put back on the table <laughs> as is. Got to love ground. venues. Yeah. <laughs> I, I um, love when you see venues do things and you're just like, yeah. all right. It I happens. Kinda, just uh, happens. We got to go. I, yeah. I, I, my job is not to do this. Nope. My job is to keep moving. Nope. Keep and we do help where necessary. If there's like oh, sure. situations happening, we're not, you know, afraid to, to help yeah. when we can. Well, I think that's the greatest thing. You know, I, I find a lot of vendors in this industry are, are so great with working with yes. one another mm -hmm. and, you know, showing that, Hey, you can just jump in. Like yes. I, I did that and I don't that's care. That's totally fine. You have to, we especially help and it will. Right. You know. Especially when you have two hours, yeah. you know, to get it done beforehand. Yeah. I have all day, you yeah. know, I can get my photos set up. We can go, Oh, we can't get that photo. We'll come back to it. Yeah. You know, not a big deal. You don't have that same luxury here. No. And two hours, if something goes amiss is, yeah. is, much less. Well, and so, you know, again, this is just asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> trying to not pose myself as ignorant, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so when you, is it a lot of coordination with the venue? Because I feel like there's a time and place where your coordination with the actual couple is not as important as what the venue needs. Yeah, from it's, you, it's right? more with the venue, but we've been to a lot. So we're mm. familiar with a lot of the, um, you know, the load in and load out instructions, right, 
Um, some obviously better than others. Yeah. Being in the city is really oh, it's a pain. Need, huh? Almost like a whole hour just to load all of your stuff in and out. Drives um, me crazy. Yeah. Whenever people say Boston, I'm like, really? You really want to? Okay. Yeah. Well, we can. Yes. <laughs> and all I have is a backpack. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a full van filled yeah, with stuff. With stuff, and it's yeah. it's so some of them, the ele- especially in Boston. Yeah. The buildings are old, so their right. elevators are also old, and you hear the creaks very small and, like, and uh, yeah, yeah, okay, not really accommodating for some of the stuff that we have to bring in. Yeah, you know? well, whenever we have to bring in our big uh, photo booths, mm. we have to roll them in. We have to go up those elevators. I'm like, you know, what? I think I might carry it up the stairs and Sometimes try it. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. It's like I'll I'll suffer for now, and <laughs> that's fine. But we'll get it up there. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, I know we had one hotel out in Boston where we had a 360 photo booth, and those things are very heavy. Yeah. And we had photo, video, DJ, and the 360, and we were just lugging things upstairs because their elevator was so tiny, I yeah. could barely fit in it. I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the name of it was, but I was like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you want to get in that thing? I was like, no. No. He's like, you claustrophobic? I was like, yeah, today. But, yeah. With yeah. that thing. If you put that all in there and you're stuck in there with just the little button to push. And, and it's a cage. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was like a cage that did yeah, that. I was yeah, like, yeah. No, no, I'm good. You no, know, sometimes it's it's worth the extra steps. I value my life. We're good. And then they were like, oh, you want to go up those stairs? And it was tiny stairs. It's mm-hmm. like, this is going to be so fun. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. The, the struggles of a vendor. It's yes. totally fine. Yep. Um, but I, I, so before we wrap it up, mm-hmm. tips, tricks, things. I mean, I tried to kind of pull that from you, I think, yep. again, from my ignorance here, but is there anything else that couples should know going into either booking with you or their big day for florals? Um, just they can include personal items if they want, if, if they wanted to personalize it a little bit more um, with, you know, charms or handkerchiefs for the bridal yeah. bouquet, something for the boutonniere, like I see give that it a some lot. sort of a personal element mm-hmm. Um to like the bouquet and the boutonniere, maybe the cake or like table settings instead of just having um, numbers. Yeah. Have um, like if if you travel and you have some places that you've gone or beaches or something, they could be right. named after a beach instead of just a number. Yeah. So I also interesting. I love the charms. I'm yeah. always asked to take photos of those and they're always so beautiful, yeah. especially if pictures of loved yes. ones, things like that. Yeah, that's very popular. Yeah. yeah. And you do a lot of that, I yeah. presume. Yeah. You just add it right to the bouquet. It's, it's actually funny because I never knew who did that. I didn't know if that was the couple or you guys. So. Me? You'll do Florist it. Flores does so much. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do that. That's too cool. Okay, yeah. really, really wonderful. And I, again, like I, I'm always asked to take mm-hmm. those photos. Mm-hmm. The only tough part is they're on the stem, and so yeah, you have to it is a little difficult. Around. But you're focusing more on the, on the charm. Yeah, that you don't have to. Worry what too I tend much to do is flowers. I take the stem and then I'll put or the the grouping of stems and I'll put the two. Um, other bouquets yep. right next to it. So yep. that way it has that floral like color. The color. Right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and try to capture yep. that all together. Or the one that I love recently is I'll put their hands together like yes. this and I'll have the charm go Hanging over it. Over. That looks love really that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Black and white can be really pretty there. Yes. Um, but just to wrap it up here. So just bloomed weddings. Yes. Where do we find you? Our website is just bloomed weddings.com. Okay. Um, Instagram is also is at just bloomed weddings. And we have a Pinterest page that's under that as well. And now that's when we're doom scrolling, as our social media yes. people have told us. So when we're doom scrolling, we're, we're finding you we're on Instagram. At Just Moon Weddings. Um, and then when we're going to book you, where are we going? To the website? To the website. Or That has a ton of information. Okay. Um, you were talking transparency and pricing and things. We yep. have you know, custom designs. We have uh, packages if, mm-hmm. if somebody's thinking that you know, maybe this is a little bit too much for me, yep. but how can we still make it look amazing? So yep. we have that, um, awesome. di- a little bit different sizes. So we accommodate all different budgets, yep. um, styles and designs. And Wonderful. All of that. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure yeah. having you on the show. I thank really you. appreciate it. I've learned Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm very happy that you're willing to deal with my ignorance here <laughs> and just offer so much because I'm sure I'm not alone here. You are not. So You are not. Well, thank you again. Thank you. We hope to have you back on someday, awesome. and we hope to uh, see you out there in the 2023 season. I'm sure that we will. Absolutely. <laughs> thank thank you. you to all of you joining us. This has been the Wonderful World of Weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian, and we hope to see you back here again soon. Thanks, guys. Yay.